Hi all, let's see how to implement IHTTP client factory and why IHTTP client factory. Before seeing how to implement, let's see why IHTTP client factory. Let's see. Here I created ASP.NET Core MVC application. Here I'm going to use student controller. Inside this controller, I created list student details view. Inside this view, I'm calling the API using HTTP client method. This is a constructor. An HTTP client class provide a base class for sending or receiving the HTTP request or responses from the URL. It allows you to make HTTP requests such as get, post, put and delete in asynchronous manner. Let's see. Here, creating an object for HTTP client and calling get asynchronous method and requesting this API. This API will return to the student details. Once response received from the server, then converting that response result as list of student details and send that result to the view. Let's check by running. Here we receive the student details. I'm displaying that details in the view successfully. Let's see the problem in using HTTP client method. Here we implemented this inside this using statement. So when process gets completed, the object will dispose, but even when the HTTP client object get disposed, the underlying socket is not immediately released. That is, the socket connection will still open for this API. Here we are calling only one time this API. If we want this API call n number of times, each time the object will create and socket connection will open and this leads to socket extortion problem. To short out this issue, .NET Core 2.1 introduced the IHTTP client factory interface, which can be used to configure and create HTTP client instance in an app through dependency injection. Let's see how to implement IHTTP client factory. In app settings.json file, I assign the base URL of the API and in startup.cs file, inside this configure services method, I added add HTTP client extension method and provide the name and to configure this base URL, that is we assigned in app settings the JSON file, accessing that and to configure this base URL inside this extension method, uh, going to access this base URL by using this name. So provide proper name. Let's create a constructor and inject the object, HTTP client object using dependency injection. Let's see. Here inside this constructor uh, passing IHTTP client factory uh, when application running this add HTTP client extension method will inject the object inside here and this create client method will return that object here inside this create client method uh, passing the name of the client here the name we assigned as API client the same name should be provided here. Like this you can configure multiple APIs from different source. Here, once object created, it will reuse the existing object each time. That is, if I request API second time, it will look the object exists or not. If the object is exist, it will reuse that object. Otherwise, create a new one and process. But HTTP client will create an object each time when we request an API. Let's see how to call this API using IHTTP client factory object. Let's see. By using this object, calling the same method get asynchronous method and providing the endpoint only without a base URL because we already configured here the base URL. It will take default and converting result as student detail list and returning to the view. Let's remove it. Let's check by running. Here our base URL returned successfully. The student details also retrieved successfully. Let's run. The list of student detail displayed in view successfully. Thank you for watching. Sample code given in description box. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.